Rub up your engines! I guess the world is truly falling apart. You seen that thing recently? Toyota and Honda are recalling millions of vehicles. Takata airbag problems. But this is a different Takata airbag problem than originally, where they threw shrapnel and ripped people apart. These have potential bad seals, so they won't work. <laughs> so you're expecting it to save you. Well, it doesn't blow up and rip your face to shreds. It doesn't work at all. <laughs> Now the Toyota models are 2010 to 2019, so you're going to want to have to check for recalls. Go to that National Highway Traffic Safety Association website. You can check it when they come out to see if your vehicle's in, because that's a lot of years. You know, that's basically 10 years worth of cars. And the Hondas go from 1996 to 2003, and there's 2.3 million of them being recalled. A lot of times you've moved the owner, especially if you're talking about 1996. That's the uh, oldest Honda one that's recalled. The odds are the original owner doesn't have any more. They don't even know who owns it probably and they're gonna be hard to get a hold of you so you want to check on the internet to see if yours is included you go by your VIN number and you just type it in at the National Highway Traffic and Safety Association website .gov I believe it is see if yours is recalled or not and you'll be able to go through it but uh, that's a big recall millions and millions of cars and they go back pretty far 96 Hondas and for the Toyotas they go back to 2010 so the Hondas are older ones being recalled than the Toyotas because they're completely different recalls are you ever worried about your car having recalls? Just look it up by your VIN number. You get confused. Looking up recall by VIN number will show you exactly how to do it. It's a very simple process in the United States. Mohammed792 says, Scotty, what's your opinion on a Porsche Panamera Forest Executive 2014 with 10,000 miles and $43,000? Okay, realize all Porsches are endless money pits eventually. Now, that's only got 10,000 miles. And I don't know what that particular one costs, but I just went to an auto show and I saw a Porsche there and it listed at $120,000. $3,000. So, I mean, if you don't mind a car that costs 100 grand and you're paying 43 grand with 10,000 miles, realize it's a Porsche. It's an endless money pit as time goes on. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. But if you just have to have one, that's a low price for a Porsche. And if you're not going to put a lot of miles on it, you can have fun with it for a while. I've had customers that have done that and had fun for a while. But don't think you can buy that car, put 20,000 miles a year on it, not have it turn into an endless money pit when it's a few years. Ray from Jamaica says, Urgent, Scotty, help me. Is it worth buying a 2000 2009 Toyota Camry with 315,000 miles for $2,500. And it's Ray from Jamaica. So I'm assuming you're in Jamaica. Now, I've been to the islands, and I know for some reason, on those islands, cars cost a fortune. I guess there's an import tax, and of course, they don't make cars there. They all have to be sent a long way on ships. So I know they go for a lot more money than they do here. Here in the United States, you'd be a fool to pay $2,500 for a car that's got 315,000 miles. I've had customers buy Toyotas that had that kind of mileage on it, but they paid $500, $400, or somebody gave them the car. They didn't pay $2,500. But since everything costs so much more in Jamaica, and I'm assuming you're still in Jamaica, then uh, it might not be a bad car. Have a mechanic check it out. And if he says everything's still running good, what the heck? Because I know things cost tons more there. But if you're in the United States, no. Look for something that's got a lot less mileage than 315,000 miles. Daryl Underline Missouri says, I've owned an 04 Nissan Murano. Both seem to go through a lot of front hubs. Set every two years. I understand Nissan isn't what they used to be, but seem to have good luck except with these hubs. Is it brand torque? Yes, they make horrible bearings. That's Nissan. I've seen them coming here. The other day, Fo at a Vietnamese restaurant, or Fa, whatever you want to call it. It tastes good. I don't care what it's called. The person was backing up in a Nissan Moreno and the axle just fell off in the parking lot. They're just poorly made. Now, on those... If you can find a quality manufacturer that's aftermarket, I would actually go that way. You get a really good company, not some cheap made in Chinese stuff, but a really quality company, a regular bearing company. I would buy that over the Nissan one because the quality can be higher if you can find it. Do a little research, see if you can buy ones that are made in the United States, Canada, or someplace other than China, and have those installed by an expert. I don't know who's working on your car. When you put those bearings in, and you tighten them up, you got to use a torque wrench to tighten them. Because if you make them too loose or too tight, they're going to wear out fast. Make sure they're torqued correctly. But if you can find a good aftermarket one that isn't made in China, go ahead and try that. Because the original equipment ones aren't that well made. They just aren't. I see them falling off all the time. Vape Lord said, I got no sub Mitsubishi Outlander, three liters V6 automatic, 152,000 miles. If I let sit for a week, I get OBD code PO300, which is random intermittent misfire. But if I drive it a day or two, the code disappears. It only seems to happen when I first started after 
sit in a week. It's got a lot of mileage on it. It's an 07 Mitsubishi. First thing I would do is just tune the thing off. If it's off a tune, the spark plugs are worn, the air filter's clogged, the fuel filter's clogged, the car isn't running perfectly, it will trip the code for intermittent misfire because it's not firing correctly on a cold engine. You say if you drive it for a day or two, it disappears because as it warms up, then it's running better and isn't going to trip the misfire codes. But after it sits for a week, it's real cold and any minor problem like a spark plug that's worn a little bit too far can pop up and trip that code. Because see, random misfires, you can get a random misfire code for something that happens maybe for a few milliseconds and it's going to trip the stupid code if it does it over and over again the first few minutes of driving. So you might just start by tuning it up. Now, I mean, it's an Outlander. It's a V6, got 152,000 miles. You're living on borrowed time now. Something's going to break soon anyway. The transmission, they blow head gaskets. So it could even be that the head gasket is starting to go. But try tuning it up, filters. Pray that helps it for a while because, you know, you're living on borrowed time with that Outlander. I've seen very few of them go much further than that without requiring thousands and thousands of dollars of repair. Gentleman 65, 79 says, Scotty, I've been saving up for a fun car to drive around a few months. I was thinking about getting a Ford Focus ST 2013 Mazda Speed 3 2012 or Honda Civic SI 2015. What do you think of them? Definitely get the Honda out of those. They're fun little zippy cars, but they can last a really long time time especially if it's a standard transmission those things can run basically forever now the automatic transmissions hondas can be a little bit weak but in those civics they're okay because they don't have the horsepower of a big v6 engine like the accords do that can have a tendency of over time burning out the automatic transmissions the civics aren't that way so you definitely want to go civic on that now you did say that you're going to drive around for a few months so i mean this would all depend on price if you're going to drive it a few months and then sell it if you can get any of those cars cheap enough and you like driving them for fun, go ahead. If you're going to get a good price on one and you can sell it later for about the same price, it doesn't really matter what you buy if you're going to only have it for a few months. But if you want to keep it for any length of time, you're better off with the Civic. Well, things get stranger and stranger. Turns out that Tesla and Michigan are going to settle a direct consumer sales lawsuit. Michigan with Ford Motor Company, Jam Chrysler, ages ago, building the place up. Of course, they controlled local politics. They made it illegal to have direct consumer sales of cars. And of course, that's what Tesla does. They weren't allowing them to have repair centers and stuff in Michigan. They used it against a lot of cell cars that way. So they're suddenly in a lawsuit. But here's the strangest thing of it all. The hitch is... If you now buy a Tesla in Michigan, you'll have to title a Tesla in another state first. Then you have to transfer it to Michigan. That's the settlement rules. I mean, when you get lawyers involved in this stuff, there's some insane things that go on. So... <laughs> If you're going to buy a Tesla in Michigan, you're going to have to title it in another state, then switch the title to Michigan for some bizarre legal shenanigans going on. You'll be able to have the car delivered to you in Michigan, even though you're technically buying it in another state. <laughs> And Tesla's also fighting similar laws in Texas and Connecticut. People will be able to, you know, buy the car in their state, have it serviced in their state. It's gone insanity. <laughs> Yeah, if you have to buy a car in one state, have it titled there, then transfer it to your state. So then they can deliver you the car to your state. You don't have to have it delivered in the other state and drive it in. It's gone bonkers. The world's really gone crazy when we allow lawyers and the state laws and the federal laws to make people jump through hoops or things like that. I mean, that's just plain crazy. Sir Monkey 5 says, what are the best halogen headlight bulbs if I don't want to get LED? Should I get OEM? Well, the OEMs, you know, they're made for the car. This, if you don't mind that halogens eventually burn out because they get real hot, go ahead and use the original equipment. If you want to mess around with the brightness or the color, companies like General Electric make various different types of bulbs that'll fit in your car, different brightness, different colors. So you might look into that if you want to. Really, if you got halogens now and you don't want LEDs, yeah, just stick with halogens. But you know, like GE, different companies. Companies make different brands and different colors if you want to mess around with it. But if you like the stock ones, just go get OEM. I mean, that's the easiest thing to do. But like I say, there's lots of companies like GE that make a whole range of ones. And if you want ones that last the longest, buy their LL, their long lasting bulbs. It costs a few bucks more, but they're better made. It's amazing to me. When I was a kid, the light bulbs came in one. They came, you bought the light bulb. That was it. They didn't say, here's a lower quality, here's a medium, here's a high quality. They were all the same. They're all made with quality. But today, hey, that's our whole society. You know? The good ones, you the better one, you want the best one. Why don't they make them all the best one? Yeah. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.